Introducing the Swift UI Framework In this reference guide, we will learn everything about the latest improvements and features of Apple's native user interface framework. But before we dive into the details, I would like to highlight the major requirements so you can follow along with me. Xcode 13 First and foremost, you will need Xcode 13 installed on your computer. Because it is in beta, Therefore you need to visit Xcode's official website at developer.apple.com slash Xcode and download it from this place as I show you. It's worth mentioning that, in order to get early access to Xcode 13, you will need to sign into your Apple Developer account, which is free, by the way. The yearly membership in the Apple Developer program is not required to download the beta OS software and applications. However, if you want to publish your applications to the App Store, then it is highly recommended. Worth knowing that since the file size of Xcode is huge, therefore it will take some times when the download is finished. While Xcode is downloading, you can continue watching the rest of this video. iOS 15 Another requirement is the latest operating system, iOS 15. That's why when you create a new SwiftUI project and save it into the students folder, then you must make sure that the deployment target is iOS 15 or newer. You can check it out by selecting the main project on the project navigator pane on the left side of Xcode, as I show you. By choosing the correct iOS version, we will be able to use the latest and greatest of the SwiftUI framework. App Icons If you are like me, who like developing great applications with high-quality design, then I have good news for you. Each project in this section is providing you the necessary resources such as app icons, graphic files, and occasionally other media types, like videos, music files, or sound effects. With that said, you can add these assets to the project and make your app look and sound better. In the rest of this introductory lecture, I will show you how to do that. We will start with adding the pre-made app icons to the project. First of all, select the assets group from the redesigned project navigator pane as I do. After that, you will see the empty app icon asset catalog in the middle pane. A new contextual menu will show up by control click or left click on this app icon asset. From this context menu, please select the show in finder option. This is the place where we will insert the pre-made app icons. Please open a new finder window in the tab bar and go to the resources folder that you previously downloaded from each section. Here, we need to open the app icon set folder and copy all files in the folder to the clipboard. When we are done with it, we can switch back to the assets catalog and paste the icons from the clipboard into the app icon set folder, as I show you. Please, select the replace option if needed. After all of these steps, you should see the recently added app icons to this project. How cool is that? Other resources. Finally, if you find other files in the resources folder, then you just need to drag and drop them into the asset catalog as I do. It is as simple as that. Testing. Now, with all this prep work, you can start coding along with me and get familiar with all new exciting SwiftUI features. Of course, when the time comes, we will need to test our project. To do that, we can either build then run it in the simulator or on a real device that has got the latest iOS or iPadOS installed. To make this happen, the only thing that we need to do is to select the desired destination from the toolbar. By clicking on the scheme selector, a new drop-down menu will appear for us. As you can see, there are some real devices at the top of the menu that I have previously added and many simulators at the bottom. Please select one of the available simulators, then build and run the project by clicking on the play button on the toolbar as I show you. After the initial launch, we can read a welcome message on the screen. It couldn't be easier to start developing in Xcode in my opinion. Since you got all the necessary information on how to create and prepare each project in this section, then without further ado, let's open Xcode and start learning.